Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to this video. A big shout out to the person that suggested this is going to be in two titles. And today, I am reacting to If You Can't Give Me Answer, I Will Be a Muslim Jenny. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. I was born in Canada, um, as were my parents. Uh, we all grew up in Western British Columbia. Um, my father is a police officer for the RCMP. It's the Canadian Royal Mounted Police. And, the, and my mom is a nurse. So I studied uh, American Sign Language interpretation at university. Um, I wanted to become a sign language interpreter for the deaf. My university career was done in Winnipeg. I worked as an interpreter for a little while. Uh, and then before I moved to Turkey, I got my teaching certificate um, and now I'm an English teacher. So I grew up in northern BC, uh, a fairly small city, lots of outdoor activities and wilderness. Um, spent a lot of time kind of in nature and going camping and whatnot. I've been working ever since I was 16. I started just with small jobs in order to get through high school and then university. Um, in university, I was working um, as a, a healthcare assistant, um, as well as working with autistic children. Um, I also was working as a cashier to pay my way through university. Um, once my, uh, I did my university education, I was working um, as an interpreter, a sign language interpreter for the deaf, as well as an intervener for the deaf blind. Before I became a Muslim, I'm gonna say I knew very little of Islam, if, if not anything. I, I mean, I remember the first Muslim, the first Muslim that I can remember meeting was actually somebody I worked with when I was in high school and I had no idea she was Muslim. I learned many years later actually after I had converted to Islam. Um, I suppose my only exposure to Islam was anything I had seen uh, on the media, particularly post 9-11 um, and any sort of whatever the media wanted me to hear, right? So that Muslims were responsible for terror attacks or these kinds of ideas. I think um, I had uh, maybe a pre-judgment about that women in Islam were oppressed. Um, I remember specifically when I was looking into Islam, one of the questions I remember asking was, is it true that women can only sit in the back seat of cars, right? So I have no idea where that notion came to me, but um, I mean, somewhere that that was a prejudgment that I had. Um, so aside aside from kind of whatever I had ever seen in the media, I had, I had no knowledge. I didn't even know that Muslims were the practitioners of Islam, right? So it was very basic. Uh, I had a conversation with a Muslim, and I remember being so shocked because the images that I had seen on the media were so different from this individual. And, uh, and then later on we had a discussion as well about the fact that the prophets between Islam and Christianity um, were similar, which was news to me. And I remember thinking, wow, I really, I should learn something about this religion. Like what if I'm ever in an opportunity or if I ever have to interpret at a mosque or uh, I, I should get some background knowledge. So I just decided to read into Islam to expand my knowledge in case I ever was going to interpret in that situation. And in the meantime, I was still having conversations about, with the individual that I had met about Islam. And so as I was reading and seeing that there were so many similarities between Christianity, which was the religion I was practicing before, um, and Islam, I just became more and more shocked at how many similar ideas there were. Um, so from there, I, I continued to do some research. And as I, the more research that I did, the more I understood that um, I, there was things about Islam that I really appreciated and then uh, there was things about Christianity that I started to question um, and eventually I, I, was, um, I was working at university at that time, I was working at a, a country club and there was a Muslim family, a Syrian Muslim family at the time. They had just joined and, and I understood they were Muslim and I said, oh, I, I see that you're Muslim and I'm learning about Islam a little bit, I'm reading about Islam and, and the man, he was really keen to, to you know, talk or to bring, bring me books or help in any way that he could. And, 
and eventually they invited me to the mosque with them and to their home and um, and so I went because I was I, I was learning about Islam and I was you know eager to go and see the community and and then when I went to the mosque I ended up meeting some really wonderful women like young women that were my age um, who I became quite close friends with and slowly slowly without even my knowing it I um, the search that was just initially just to kind of become a better human being and to gain knowledge, um, I, I started to ask myself some serious questions about like, is this something that I really believed? And, and um, yeah, what were the questions that, and, that I was struggling with within Christianity? And, and these are things that I needed to contemplate more. And I remember one evening, um, as a few months into reading about Islam, as things were starting to get more serious for me, and I was realizing that, um, that this was a religion that I really wanted to consider, um, I remember praying at night and just asking Allah and I just saying, you know, Allah, whoever you are, or God, whoever you are, if you're God of Christianity or if you're God of Islam, show that to me and and kind of give me a sign, but make it clear to me, right, which which is truth. And and after I made that supplication and I prayed that prayer that night, it was um, it, Everything just became so much clearer. I really met amazing Muslim people in my life. Um, the questions that I was struggling with, uh, just about the faith or about modesty, like covering or um, monotheism or the history of the Quran, like all these kinds of things. Uh, just all, God just keep putting people in my life to answer those questions. So I was really concerned about the fact that um, I was looking into Islam, but people didn't know that I hadn't told my friends, I hadn't told my family, and what was that going to mean if I did accept Islam and how would they receive me? And so I had made that prayer about, you know, God, who are you? God of Christianity, God of Islam. And I, um, I made an appointment uh, with the, the chaplain, the, the pastor of the Christian community on our university campus. And I had asked him, I, I sat down with him and I said, look, I, I'm at the point where I'm questioning my faith and I have some questions, and if you can't give me an answer, I, I believe I'm gonna become Muslim. And a lot of the questions uh, particularly were with um, the Bible actually, and how the Bible was selected, and how the books of the Bible were selected, and the can like the canacity of the Bible, and, and, um, in the, and why wasn't the original Bible in existence, and um, why was there such discrepancy between the different versions of the Bible? And um, whereas the Quran um, has been preserved for 1,400 years, and and that was something that was really significant for me because, I mean, God even in Christianity, God says he, like He will protect His word, and there was the Quran that was the message of God that even if it was physically destroyed. Um, it would be protected because so many people have memorized it and the original is still in existence and and then here was the bible that there was no original and within the versions there were so many you know interpretations and um and so i sat down with this pastor and i i asked these questions and he couldn't he couldn't give me any answer and and he said you know in the end you just have to believe and that's what faith is and you just have to believe and um and that that was a struggle for me that didn't feel right because i felt surely um, surely religion and belief it's more than just like a hunch or it's more than a feeling or it's more than an idea like I I wanted something that felt more concrete and the same weekend at my university there was a conference that had been put on by the local Muslim Student Association and they brought in a speaker from England um, and I just remember walking in that weekend and all of the youth were there all of you know all of these students and everybody wanted to meet him he was quite popular at the time and um, and everybody wanted to talk to him and spend time with him and I walked up to him and he he just sat and answered all of my questions and uh, I just remember thinking wow like uh, I went to this pastor and I had these questions and he he couldn't give me his answers he couldn't be clear to me and then this man who everybody wants to speak with um, he dedicated hours, literally hours of his time to just sit there and to answer my questions. And the other really unique part of it, because I asked him the same questions I asked the pastor, I asked him um, questions about the Bible. And, and this, 
this uh, this brother from uh, from England, he gave me the the history not from the Muslim perspective. He actually he was a comparative religious scholar, and and he gave me the perspective from the religious the Christian Church from the Christian history books. And he said, look, this is the history. If you want to go read about it, um, you can just go to like a Christian you know a Christian textbook that you'd find at a Christian university. And and I so appreciated that perspective because I didn't want his bias. I wanted truth. I wanted something concrete, which is what I had gone to the pastor for. And and in that moment, I felt like so much relief that I was like, there it is, there's the facts. But at the same time, um, I was I questioned, why had I never learned this when I went to, the, uh, to church or Sunday school? Because I was very active in the Christian church growing up. And um, anyway, so at the end of the evening, he asked me, he said, you know, do you believe in Allah? And I said, yeah, like I've always believed in God. That's no problem. The concept of God is, has never been an issue. And then he said, do you believe that the Prophet Muhammad is his, like the final prophet um, and messenger? And I said, yeah, I think that makes sense. And then, he, so he said to me, he said like, go, um, you know, go wash, take your ablutions and come back and let's like give your shahada, your testimony of faith. And I was just like, whoa, no, this like, this is not happening right now. I can't do this right now. Because again, I was at that point where like, I knew it was truth, but I was so scared to take the step. And, and it was funny because I had prayed and I had asked God, I was like, who are you and show me truth. And there it was. But in that moment, it was just like, I needed to take the step, you know, like God did his part. It was time for me to do mine. But um, again, I knew what that meant for me. I knew that that meant the following day I would put on hijab or um, which not everybody does but for me it was a really important step I knew like if I was going to make this deci decision I was going to live as a Muslim and that was going to mean no more drinking alcohol and you know no party no pork no you know like putting a hijab on and so I told him no like I'm not I'm not gonna become Muslim tonight and uh, we, we, we continued the discussion and at the end of it, I said, look, this conference is two days long. If at the end of the weekend, I feel like I do today, like I will become Muslim, I'll, I'll make that decision, which is what I did. So that was a Friday night. And then on the Sunday, May 14th, I, uh, I gave my testimony of faith in front of everybody at this conference and became Muslim. It was extremely scary because, um, because Islam was not well received in the media at the time. And I knew that if I told them, I was probably gonna lose them. And th those two friends that I sat with that night, they were incredibly supportive and they're still two of my best friends today. Um, there's lots of other people that didn't, uh, didn't support me. And eventually after I became Muslim, I took some time and I sent out uh, an email to everybody. A lot of my, my older friends and high school friends, they were, they were in a different city. I went to university in a different city. So I told people over email um, and I told my family a couple a week or so after I had become Muslim. And they were living in a different city. And of course it was difficult because uh, they, they didn't know what to expect. It was really scary for them, right? They. Um, they didn't know what I was going to look like or what did that mean and they didn't see the process. They hadn't seen me looking into things. They, um, they didn't know the Muslim community. Again, their experience of Islam was what they had seen in the media. My dad was a police officer. Uh, it was really difficult for them. It was really hard. My mom was very fearful that um, there's this movie, Not Without My Daughter. She was really fearful I was going to fall <laughs> into, like I was going to be kidnapped or um, that if I got married you know, that my children were going to be taken away from me, I would never leave the house, like all of these bizarre Hollywood kind of uh, perceptions of Islam that are put on them, that, that was their experience, right? And so they, they really struggled. My dad was for different reasons, my mom for different reasons. Um, eventually over time, uh, they've certainly come around and we've, we're still very close, but there's, there were some major struggles early on. Um, very interested. I mean, I love the fact that she was, she already had a heart that wanted to help people out there. I mean, it's very few people that say, you know what, I want to help translate this for deaf people or help people with disabilities with this and that. It's very, very rare people. 
she already had the heart of God, a heart that was willing to help and she chose a very good course to study because she wanted to help people out there. And some people only help because they want to be seen by the world that they're helping but in this case I feel like it's very very different. This is just from within and saying you know what I think I can do this. I feel like I can um my skills can can be put into this and it can actually help someone out there and i love the fact that she converted because she on her own took interest because of what she was studying and because she was willing to help people she said you know what she thought ahead of herself someday i might be i might need to translate something let me learn this religion or let me look into this religion not because she wanted to convert but because um she was studying it at the at the time but through studying such a course that she chose she came across islam and she said she had little to no knowledge of it so certain things open us up to the world and it's up to us to go out there and look further into them or just ignore them completely and when she decided to convert like she said many of us actually fear she feared herself of how people would react of how her friends and family would react and of course, people are confused because they lack knowledge about the religion and how it's practiced due to many misconceptions out there. So let me get to the second part of this, but otherwise feel free to drop your comments in the comment section below and I'll be glad to read them.